Hello and welcome to a new edition of DTC News from the 27th of September to the 4th of October. What are we talking about in this edition, Google? Google Ads. Editions in the Overviews from Artificial Intelligence and in Google Lens. Optimized targeting in display. Yes, but more importantly, why not? A professional audit in six steps for a Google Ads account. Some interesting predictions for the shopping season. Custom pricing in shopping currently in beta. A simulator that does not simulate well and some initial feedback on the background of the Google system for changing backgrounds in shopping campaigns with artificial intelligence. As for Meta, we have a test conducted with three identical ad sets and different results. TikTok has extended the brand safety and suitability reports from third parties and finally the search terms in performance bugs unlike Google and then also them. They have launched ads in Copilot search which is the generative search version of their search engine. Let's start with some extra content this week. Microsoft famous for perhaps the most widely used script for monitoring and tracking performance max has released a new script that creates graphs of the historical performance of assets in performance maximum it has a basic free version where the data is daily and a paid version that includes weekly and monthly data. Another extra post mentioned earlier, as we said, TikTok has expanded. Do all three third parties that handle brand safety and suitability on its platform, allowing them to see exactly which content the advertisers ads appear next to. But let's get to news number 10. So, well, what is it about? Alex van der Poel on LinkedIn.com comments on the initial tests conducted with the background of the new Google tool that changes. Backgrounds in shopping campaigns using a prompt with artificial intelligence. Some pros, some cons. In short, I recommend reading this post to understand whether it can be used or not. News number nine. A very nice post by Jill Suskingales, where she explains how to improve and reduce the number of fake leads from Google Ads campaigns. Aside from the basic suggestion to set up a plugin to avoid fake leads, which could be Google Rechart, for example. There is also a very interesting final consideration, which is that lead generation campaigns, usually among display campaigns, and to generate fewer fake leads because they are on Google properties. So the content is more controlled. Of course, news number eight. <laughs> on LinkedIn.com, Mike Ryan from Smetch posted the results of a study conducted on thousands of accounts where they observed how the campaign performance simulator works. They actually discovered that this simulator takes the results from the last week, models them and presents them in the following week. So it simulates poorly. 
making it somewhat problematic to use. During periods when significant performance changes are expected, such as Black Friday or Christmas, just to name a couple. News number seven. Microsoft has posted its monthly update. But the interesting thing about this update is that it has decided, unlike Google, to show all search terms individually in Performance Max rather than regrouped into categories as Google does. In my view, this is an excellent choice for transparency. In contrast to the decision made by Google, which I don't believe will change because Google is able to to always keep performance max as a back box, and this is a choice they have made from the very beginning, and I don't believe it will change because it would give much more room for optimization, which is precisely the opposite of the choice made at the launch of PMAX news number two. Still on LinkedIn, there is a nice post by Georgi Zajakov discussing a beta that has emerged in which Google, obviously connecting to the advertiser's CMS, is able to run shopping campaigns with customized prices for products. This means that certain audiences might see a different price, which will also be different on the website. Clearly, there is a need to understand how to manage something like this, which is somewhat borderline even from an ethical standpoint. However, it is something that will eventually come to our plate of Google Ads Advertisers. News number five. John Luma conducted an interesting experiment on johnluma.com. He took three completely identical ADSETs and conducted a split test to see what happened within Meta ADS, that is, to understand if the platform was able to recognize that it was exactly the same set and observe what occurred. There were also quite significant differences, as you can see. In this table between the set that performed best and the set that performed worst, hence the title of the unbearable lightness of randomness. In Meta HUD, despite the ads being exactly identical and the settings being exactly the same, it is possible that random variables, such as where the ads are shown, the audiences that take up more space, the time, the device, and other factors still create a difference. Now, aside from the fact that statistically it is not very significant, I suppose that by increasing the investment, the three results would have more or less aligned. However, this means that there is an area completely related to chance. That is beyond our control. This space will continue to widen as the total automation of campaigns progresses. News number four. On searchangeland.com, there is a nice post by Mark Bowen who makes a series of observations about this year's shopping seasons, discussing how it will be and what will naturally happen. In broad terms, he hypothesizes that the timing will be somewhat advanced, suggesting that people, according to this hypothesis, are already starting to buy Christmas gifts. Furthermore, a slightly higher peak is expected, as has been the case in recent years, but it will be slightly earlier. In this post, you will discover why he makes this. Hypothesis. News number three.
Podium, a great post by Michelle Morgan on wordstream.com where Michelle explains the six key steps to having a uh, professional audit. A Google Ads campaign audit is obviously conducted by professionals. So first they look at conversions, then they examine a whole series of other aspects related to the structure of the campaigns followed by the choice of keywords and then how the ads are written. In short, it is a sequence of steps that ultimately provides an extremely clear and professional overview of our audit. So, great post, as is almost always the case with those, written by Michelle Morgan. News number two. The Silver Medal. Still on searchengine.com, this time, written by Juliet Smith, she expresses something I have always thought, namely that optimized targeting in display. Campaigns only make sense if you are actually running a display campaign. At that point, you adjust it somewhat like a demand generation or performance pass, meaning you provide an indication of what the seed of users who might be most interested in your news should be, and then let Google take care of the rest. But if you run more structured display campaigns, leaving optimized targeting on means you won't understand anything about what is working more or less. But the number one news story this week is indeed actually the fact that both the tech giant Google and here we find a post on Google's blog and Microsoft with a corresponding post on Microsoft's blog are pushing for ads in generative search powered by artificial intelligence which is called Copilot in Microsoft, specifically Copilot Search. While in Google, it is presented as AI overviews and Google Lens. And it is interesting that they are both publishing this at the same time because they are evidently competing in this area. I also want to mention a comment Post on lingreen.com by Navaha Hopkins, who makes a comparison between the two voices, between the two implementations, and adds some considerations on which G believes is more suitable for which type of campaign. Well, that's all. For this week, we did it. If I forgot something, please comment. May the ROI be with you and peace be with everyone. Bye.